Hello everybody and welcome back. Welcome back to the channel all about retiring in Thailand, specifically Chiang Mai. So it's a nice uh, morning here. It's Monday morning. It's 8.30 in the morning. It is smoky. It looks like it's going to be another bad day, worse than yesterday. Um, but right now I'm just a little bit up the road well, at the back of the condominium where it's on the Ping River, there's this walkway that goes along the edge of the river. I've walked up there and found this little seat in the middle of nowhere, really, and just overlooking the river. It's a nice spot here. I'll turn around. You can have a quick look and see what I mean. So there's the river down there. Looking good. And, uh, yeah, I thought I'd... Uh, just sit down and uh, chat about a few uh, comments that were left on the previous videos that I thought I might answer and um, and also give a few extra little tips as well so um, yeah let's have a look we've got um, one person and I won't go through the names because I'm really terrible with names I just can't I can't place names but you know who you are um, they asked me if the um, real estate agents charged a fee for, for helping me find my condo and uh, and uh, signing up and I can tell you that overall in Thailand um, agents don't charge you any fee as the customer looking to rent uh, a property um, all the uh, costs go back to the landlord even um, when you go to the real estate agent, in my case it was Perfect Homes here in Chiang Mai, um, call into the office, um, meet the girls in there, um, give them what you want to know, what you're looking for, give them details, and they'll usually go back and, and call you later that day um, and let you know what they've found on their listings that might be suitable for you. Um, usually you'll go out and meet them at the condos, so they'll um, exchange messenger or over here they use a line app and uh, they'll let you know what time and where and just suit whatever's suitable for you and you'll go over and um, meet them at the condo they'll pick up the keys and and show you around um, that's how it usually works there's no charge for that you can go and look at all the condos you want although <coughs> try not to waste their time um, but it's a good idea to have a good idea knowledge yourself of what you're looking for and to let them know that like if you want a pool you want a gym you want a certain size you want one bedroom you want studio you want um, a fan as well as aircon you want uh, a kitchen all these things uh, balcony um, what direction it's facing is important how much sun you get in the place all those things have that all written down so you can let them know then they can go through all their listings and pick out the ones that you know that you're you're most likely going to choose and there's a lot there too there's no shortage of rentals here in Chiang Mai and properties available particularly right now at this time of the year so at this time of the year we're talking it's now March um, it's it is the smoky season it is the hottest time of the year but um, there's a lot of uh, properties available right now so that should answer that question um, also when you do decide to oh yes I want this one I'm going to sign the contract um, and and go through that process again you pay nothing to the agent all right there's no cost to you um, the agents will come in they'll 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 come in they'll open up uh, the place um, when you've agreed to rent they'll go through photograph everything um, every little mark or bit of damage there might be or whatever right through it record it all and that all goes on to part of the contract. And in my cases, she was very, very thorough and went through everything. There was photos of everything. Not that everything was damaged, but just the condition. Even uh, your plates and your, um, your cutlery and your glasses and cups, all that was photographed. So they've got a record of everything that was there and how it was there. Um, but no cost to you okay no cost all you do and this is in most cases is you will pay uh, one month's rent up front when you decide right I want this I, I want to rent this place you'll pay one month's rent up front and then you will 
and then the day you move in is when you pay the the deposit which is what they hold and you get that back at the end of your rental term usually 12 months uh, that's two months but I talk about that in my first video renting a condo if you want to go into more detail and see what I actually did before that go check out that video all right that should cover that question um, another one asked me about uh, a budget now a budget's a pretty well you know I, I came over here uh, expecting to work on a budget um, before I left I sort of researched and found out what the cost of living would be here um, but I was way wrong um, the good news is it was way cheaper than I expected okay which is good but having said that your upfront costs when you first move here and particularly when you first find the place you're going to stay at expect to pay out a lot of money like I said your months advance in advance rent and your two month deposit on your rental property um, you want to get internet connected if it doesn't have internet and uh, might suggest also the Wi-Fi that's included in some condos is not really that reliable or good so make sure you check with the building management about that it's probably worthwhile going through a bigger provider like AIS and getting your own connected all right, so that expense costed me. Um, there was a 800, uh, that's all, yeah, 800 um, baht fee for the guys to come out and fit it for me. And I thought it would just be connect the modem or router to the current wires and stuff, but no, they actually had to drill holes and, and lay cable. So they were there for an hour setting everything up and they ran uh, cable to my TV, smart TV, and then to the computer, um, directly to the computer. So um, the only Wi-Fi I actually use is my phone, which automatically switches over to the Wi-Fi when I go into the room. Um, having a direct cable connection, if you can do it to your computer, is much, a little bit faster and a bit more reliable. But the speed is fantastic. Like I'm on one of the lowest plans with AIS, so my monthly fee, if I remember right, is about 400. I'm pretty sure it's about 400 baht a month. And that's at 300 upload and 300 download speed. Four times, five times faster than anything in Australia. So happy with that. Um, your mobile phone, okay. Don't make the mistake of showing up at the airport and going to, your, going to one of those places there and picking up a SIM card. Hold off if you can. There's free Wi-Fi available anywhere free Wi-Fi at the airport to get you through to your next flight or to find your directions whatever um, that's that's an easy way of um, getting around having to get Wi-Fi straight away once you're in Chiang Mai or wherever you're gonna stay then go out and have a look and go to and well as I did I went back to I went to AIS that put my internet in uh, at the condo I went to AIS for my um, phone now it's um, pretty much almost unlimited and it costs me about 300 baht a month. Uh, so way down with the cheapest plan I had in Australia too. So that's that. Budgeting, now budget can be a big subject. I may go into more detail on a full video on that. But uh, a few tips on budgeting is uh, food. So if you don't eat it, if you don't walk into the air conditioned restaurants to eat, okay you'll 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 pay less than you would in the outdoor street cafes and uh, stalls along the roadside all right so for example there's a nice place I go down to where I buy now I'm bad with the with the Thai language and I can't read it all I know is it's number six on the board <laughs> it's a uh, it's a uh, chicken and noodles it's really nice Anyway, that's a full meal that fills me up, and that costs me the equivalent of um, oh, 50 baht, so less than two dollars, about a dollar fifty. That's my dinner sorted. You know, you get free ice cold water, um, but usually you can go to Seven on the way back and get something else. But that's it. Um, now, if I was to go inside and have something inside, you pay, you can pay twice, three times, four times, and up for that price. Um, but the street food is fine. It's it's no problem at all. I mean if you're worried about getting sick or anything like that 
just go to places that are busy, that, are, that the tyres are eating in. That's usually a good sign. Uh, another small tip for budgeting is when you, um, you'll find that when you spend money here, you pick up a lot of loose change and coins, and they build up quite a bit. So I have this little bowl at my door as I walk in the condo. It just fills up with coins. There's uh, one baht, five baht, and ten baht coins. Okay, just make a habit of emptying your pockets and and putting them all into this thing. Because if you go for a walk and you go down to 7-Eleven, um, which we're going to do later, and I'll show you, um, go down there and grab a iced coffee or an iced chocolate. All right, twenty baht. All right, I get one, maybe two a day down there, and I use my coins. I go through my coins and I pick out all the one baht coins and, and, and just keep it down because they do build up and they start to get a bit of a problem. So there you go, tip on loose change, all right? What else? Um, I've mentioned the smoke. It is smoky again. Um, I want to apologize. I mentioned in the last... Um, video and also in one of the shorts I did that I was going to put up a live webcam um, to show the view and we watch this and just set it up so that it captures the sunrise um, because it's a bright red sunrise as it comes up through the smoke and it shows just how bad it is and a lot of people are curious about the smoke and just how bad it is up here now unfortunately YouTube won't let you do live streaming until you have 50 subscribers Okay, so at the time I was about five short when I put the short up about it. I was about five down on 50. No problem. I got up to 50, got up to 60, 70, 80, 100. And for some reason it was still, every time I tried to hit live stream on my camera, it wouldn't tell me. It was still showing, uh, you're almost there. 50 subscribers, then you can stream live. Well, now I'm over 200 subscribers and I gotta thank you all for that. It's amazing how quick this is growing. Um, uh, and it's still telling me <coughs> I can't do a live stream so I rang Google support um, I have another channel that has 5,000 plus subscribers so I get YouTube support and I spoke to them and they informed me that it can actually take between 7 and 10 days for YouTube to catch up right which is sounds a bit crazy but hey it is what it is so hopefully in the next few days, definitely by this weekend, um, YouTube will recognize I've got well over the 50 subscribers and I'll be able to do a live stream. And I will set that camera up and let it run for, you know, four or five hours uh, one morning capturing the live stream of, uh, of the sunrise over uh, sunrise coming up over Chiang Mai. All right. So, yeah, but each day I'm checking to make sure it's if they finally catches up and realizes that I've got enough subscribers for it. What else have I got to mention? That's the live stream. <coughs> Excuse me, yes, <coughs> it may be the smoke. I went out and bought masks the other day. I hope that'll, and here I am not wearing it. Anyway, um, yeah, I will wear it. I'll put it in my bag so I don't forget. Um, another thing here, uh, what have we got? Someone else, someone asked about, am I going to hire a motorbike or buy, buy a motorbike? Um, my original plan was to buy a motorcycle when I came over, um, when I was in Australia. And uh, because back in Australia I had a motorbike, I had a 2019 Suzuki V-Strom 1000, so a big adventure bike, which I miss. And I, had to, I sold that, so um, I was going to buy, not an adventure bike, but something a little bit decent here, you know. But unfortunately for me, um, about... It was exactly three weeks before I was to fly out of Australia I ended up having a pulmonary edema so if you know what that is it's basically a blood clot went through my heart into my lung and stopped me from breathing and I rushed to hospital as in rode my bike to hospital I also had a Kawasaki Ninja as well um, I took that <laughs> Road to hospital and um, fortunately went through into emergency and at the time I thought I was having a heart attack. I had chest pains and couldn't breathe. God knows why I was having a heart attack, but anyway. Um, so bang, I'm into emergency. They're sticking 
uh, morphine into me. I was in absolute terrible pain. Every breath I took, I mean, I could only inhale maybe 15% of the oxygen my body needed. It was, <gasps> that was it. I, I couldn't, I was almost going on unconscious. Um, and anyway, morphine, everything else, wires all over me, trying to find out what was wrong, asking me questions and all this. Uh, finally rushed me through, gave me a, a, a scan and then a, a, a bigger um, x-ray and they found out what it was, the blood clot, which to this day we never found out what caused it. Usually it comes from uh, thrombosis in the legs where you get deep vein thrombosis. Uh, cause the clot and that travels up but I never had any signs of that so I don't know why that happened anyway cut that story short um, I I nearly died I literally nearly died uh, and if I'd have been another half an hour uh, waiting before I decided I was gonna ride my bike to the hospital which is stupid I should have called an ambulance uh, yeah it could have been bad news anyway um, what happened was I got put on blood thinners, um, a Pixamax or a pack, uh, something like that. I can't remember the name of them. I have to take one of them every day, morning and night. My alarm on my phone is set for eight o'clock every morning, every night. And I have to um, take these tablets. They're blood thinning tablets, all right? And one of the doctors, now the doctor, my doctor warned me that it basically um, thins your blood so your blood has less chance of clotting which is fine because I don't want another blood clot, particularly since we don't even know what caused it. Um, so I'm on those for six months, but one of the negative effects of being on blood thinners, and this is getting back to the motorcycle thing, is that if I were to have an accident on a motorbike and cut myself, or, well, to put it lightly, you know, bleed, um, I would be gushing blood and bleeding out um, even when I was on the thinners the next day in the hospital, um, when they told me I could go home and they took the cannula out of my arm, uh, the nurse had forgotten that I was on blood thinners and the blood just streamed out of me. And so I have to be aware that if I'm involved in an accident and I'm going to start bleeding, that it could be more serious, um, particularly internal bleeding. So you could have a come off... Um, damage your ribs or do something and if there's internal bleeding well that could be very very dangerous when you're on blood thinners so this is the reason why I'm not going to rent or ride a motorcycle in fact I shouldn't even be on the back of a motorcycle taxi like I have been uh, in case he has an accident you know but I'm minimizing that I'm walking everywhere and, and I can catch what they have uh, a company here called Bolt which is like Uber you can get a, choose a motorcycle or a car. And there's not much difference in the price anyway. Um, so I usually go with the car option. So that's it, yeah. Um, it will be, before, until I'm off those blood thinners, I won't be taking thinners. I'll be, um, here we go. We've got some gardeners here. Let me have a quick look. There we go. There are. Uh, spreading some water around probably help keep the dust down uh, and watering the plants along the riverside here actually so it looks quite good so yeah um, yeah so I won't be getting a bike I was actually last night looking on a Google Maps at rentals around the area there's tons here um, I've looked up some information so you can get a 125 little Scooby like that guy was riding there uh, which is good enough you know or a Honda Click which are also good bikes and I've seen them for three and a half to four thousand at the most a month to rent all right and the process usually is you leave your passport or a copy of your passport there um, as you rent and um, and yeah the bikes yours um, some require a deposit some don't um, Jeez, I would just recommend checking out the reviews on Google and how recent those reviews are. Uh, there's two very good bike rental places I saw here that seem very popular with some fantastic reviews where they give you a, you know, a good choice of helmets that fit, the bikes are well maintained, um, and, you know, and they even have a 
a really good website where they show you all the Mihong Sun um, popular routes to go and up to Doisa Tep, up to the temple and, and things like that. And also um, another thing, a lot of the bikes also come with phone holders, which is handy. If you're going to rent a bike, probably want to get one that's got a phone holder so you can have your Google Maps on, up, opened up and on your phone while you're riding. Yeah, another good tip. But yeah, it'll be a while before I rent a bike. Um, at some point, my doctor gave me all the details written down of my diagnosis I had in hospital and everything. And at some point, I'm supposed to go to a doctor here and get a test redone. When I was in hospital, they took blood and they did a blood test. And the results went back to my doctor, but they weren't conclusive because they didn't take enough blood. So just to be on the safe side, she's given me the maximum of six months on these blood thinners. Now, I will find a doctor here. I don't know how. I'm probably going to ask a couple other expats that live here would be the best way where to go and, um, and get that test redone uh, because I may not need to be on them for six months, um, which would be great. Otherwise, yeah, I'm not going to take the risk um, of jumping on a motorbike even if you cut yourself shaving I notice you you tend to bleed a little bit more and you've just got to hold the pressure there you know three or four times longer to stop the bleeding so yeah not worth the risk all right well um, there you go I've answered a few questions if you've got any questions put them down in the comments below if you want to know anything um, I'm happy to talk about it in the next video um, I think right now I'm going to go for a little bit more of a walk and we'll come back when I go into 7-Eleven because I want to show you how to get how to get the best iced coffee in Thailand for the cheapest price at your 7-Eleven. All right? Okay, guys. Thanks all. And uh, I shall be back shortly. Bag this time too. Cup. Thank you. No. Thank you. Got it. Cup. Cup. There you go. I need to have it. The best iced coffee. Uh, iced coffee espresso for twenty baht, less than a dollar. And I'm going to have that just where. I'll be right back. Okay, so there it is. Mm. Oh, best thing. And where am I? Where I'll be for the next hour. So there you go. If um, if you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up comment below if you've got any questions let us know um yeah it's all good um thank you all for subscribing don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you get notified when videos come out uh, which are fairly often recently and if you'd like to me to talk about something in the next video uh let me know and i'll mention it but mostly today it was all about uh some of the comments and questions i had from previous videos all right guys have a good one, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye for now. Cheers.